the apex of the mountain. Yeah. Got the male and the female off the bed. So now we're starting part two of our bait breakdown. You ready? Uh, all right, let's see. This is the most requested. <clears throat> all right, let's do it. Carolina rig. Carolina rig. That's going to be also poor conditions. I'm talking about sunny. You can catch them on it when, when the shatter spawn and stuff like that if they're shallow. Maybe I shouldn't say that. Maybe that's a little bit of a secret. But anyways, that's going to be, for the most part, tougher conditions, summer months, postpone type of a deal. You want to use like a 20-pound main line tied to a 20-pound leader, or you can go a little bit lighter leader if you think you need to. It's going to be mostly, like I said, postponed summer months, warm water, clear water, but you can throw it in a little bit more stained water. But I don't, I'm not going to throw it in muddy water ever. It's going to be relatively clear water for the most part. And the rod I'm going to throw it on is going to be a 7 foot 6 or a 7 foot 9 medium heavy or a 7 foot 6 heavy. 20 pound line, 8 to 1 gear ratio reel, and just uh, sling it out there, grind it across the bottom back to you. Okay. I don't know if I've ever caught a fish on video on a Carolina rig. On my YouTube channel. Don't think I've ever showed y'all me catching one of Killer Rig. I've caught bass on it though. Just not a whole lot. What bait do you have? Lots of different baits. The uh, 13 Fish and Jerk is one that's a really, really good one. I haven't thrown a Carolina Rig in a while, but that's one I've heard some of those guys are catching really good on that 13 Fish and Jerk. It's kind of like a traditional fluke style bait, but has a little more action on the tail and it catches a little more water and stays up a little bit higher on that Carolina Rig. So that's a really, really good bait for it. Swim baits. What kind? You have to do all different sizes. Oh, God. And line through or... What you talking about? Two inch to 14 inch. Yeah. God, dog. Specifically, a comment said six inch <clears throat> Okay. Well, I throw the six inch harness style or line through style baits. Actually on a... 7.6, medium, heavy, fast, almond. Rod loads a little bit better than a fast. Like it actually has more tip to it than a fast, so it's a really good rod for that. 22 pound Sunline Shooter. If I'm in extremely clear water, I'll go down to 18. But for the most part, 22 pound Shooter, seven winning gear ratio reel. Clear water, clouds help a little. <clears throat> Wind helps a lot. You wanna be fishing it relatively shallow, the harness style and the line through style baits. Now. I throw like the Kitek style baits, the 13 Fish and Truro, those types of baits on a ball head, belly weight, underspin, all that type of stuff. You know, like the uh, Gamakasu has the one you thread up on there and has a little blade hanging off the bottom. I can't remember what that's called right now. But that rig, all that stuff, is going to be mostly clear water to slightly stained water. Wind always helps, clouds help a little. And then I match it a two inch swim bait I'm going to throw on 10 pound test. Uh, you know, four and a half inch swim and I'm gonna throw on 16 or 18 pound test. So I just kind of match it based on just how finessey I'm trying to go with all that stuff. And I always like a rod that loads a little bit better. I don't want to throw on like a jig rod or anything like that. I want a rod that's gonna load pretty good because a lot of times it's got either single hooks coming out the top of the back or it's got a treble hook. And then also if you are throwing the one that's got the screw lock onto the big weight with the blade on it. God, I can't remember what that's called right now. I just cannot remember what that's called. But if you throw that you have to throw it on a heavy action rod like a 7.3 heavy something like that is what you have to throw that style bait on because you have to set the hook extremely hard and a lot of times throw it around grass or wood and stuff like that so is that good enough for swim baits what time of year swim baits are all year literally all year from the dead of winter all the way through the summer you can throw the glide baits you can throw you know the harness style baits the line through style baits the you know single jig head style baits the only time that i don't throw it is in super muddy water or in muddy water in general. I just don't pick that up. I throw something like the spinner bait or the chatter bait or the um, square bill. So, when do you know when to downsize or upsize? It's just you want to match the bait they're feeding on. If you see a lot of gizzard shad up eating algae and stuff off rocks, I don't want to throw a two inch bait. On Hartwell, you know, I'm, they're feeding on a lot of small little be thread fins. So, you know, I, the herring were around too. I was going to downsize and throw a more finesse style bait there because it's trying to match the bait they're feeding on. I want it to look as natural as possible whenever they first see that bait. When do you change type? Like whether it's belly weighted or... Depends on the, co on the cover. A belly weighted one's going to be around grass. Something where I can't get away with that top exposed hook. We have a jig head called the Scout from Untamed Tackle. If I'm going to throw the Churro or something like that, that's the hook I'm going to use most of the time is you know, a quarter ounce, a three-eighths ounce, a eighth ounce, some type of a scout 
on the churro is going to be what I'm going to be throwing a lot of times around docks and stuff like that. If I'm in heavy vegetation, that's when I go to the belly weight. Okay, your next one is wacky rig. Wacky rig. That's one that is always tied on. It's usually on the front deck, but it's always tied on. There's a couple different worms you can use for that. There's a like a five inch stick worm, which is like the standard, and then there's a like the floating worm style bait, finesse worm, six inch worm, wacky rig that has a much slower fall, like the BFF. That is one where they eat it all the time, obviously, because they eat all finesse stuff all the time. But it's gotta be tough, high skies, whenever they're not biting reaction baits, it's gotta be typically pre-spawn all through the summer. You can catch them on the fall too, but that time of year from like March until October, that's really whenever you're gonna have that laying on the front deck a lot. Light line, 10 pound test leader, typically go down to eight sometimes, go up to 12 sometimes, like if you're on Lake Fork around heavy cover, you wanna throw, throw 12. 18 pound braid backing, seven foot three medium, fast, envy rods what I throw it on, 2500 size spin reel, fastest gear ratios you can get. Just kind of clear water also, it's gonna be a clear water technique to slightly stain. And that's about it. Conditions you want it to be pretty much slick, calm, tough conditions. That's when you want to pick that up, for me anyway. Flipping bait. <clears throat> well, this right here is something that I swore a long time ago I will never fish a tournament without something to flip on the front deck. And that's, that kind of goes without saying, being my style of fishing, but gosh, do I love flipping. Catch a lot of big ones on it. Very consistent way to catch good bags. Basically, that's gonna be one of those things where high skies, a little bit of wind does help a little, but catch them on it in the clouds. You can catch them on it, you know, whenever it's raining, whatever. You can always flip whenever you find the right piece of cover that you come to where you're like, this, there should be a fish in there and it's hard to get in there with any other type of bait. So that's something I leave on the front deck all the time. It's gonna be literally 12 months out of the year from whenever it's super cold to whenever it's really cold, I might flip like an ace jig a little bit more. Whenever it's hotter, I might flip like the invader a little bit more because it's a little bit more subtle and a little bit more finessey. But that's gonna be something I flip 12 months out of the year and then it's gonna be heavy line for the most part. Super clear water, flipping like pole timber, dock pose, that type of stuff where there's nothing bad that they can really get you in. 18 pound test is fine, but it's typically gonna be 20 or 22, even 25 sometimes. Sunline shooter is what I use all the time, period, that's it, sunline shooter. And then very, the kind of rod, usually it's gonna be a 7.6 heavy, 7.6 medium heavy, 7.3 heavy, 7.3 medium heavy, one of those four rods, depending on the bait that I'm actually trying to flip. I'm flipping a worm, might be on a 7.3 medium heavy. If I'm flipping a jig, it might be on a 7.3 heavy, 7.3 medium heavy. Y'all you, kind of get that. High speed reel all the time for flipping eight to one, no matter what I'm flipping, it's gonna be on an eight to one. And water depth, typically gonna be six or eight foot or less. Gonna be mostly, you know, that two foot to six foot range is typically what I'm gonna be flipping. Whether it be boat docks, lay down trees, beaver dams, whatever you wanna say, typically gonna be two to six foot. And uh, don't matter the water color. Super clear, all the way to extremely muddy. Always gonna be flipping. What's the difference in your drop shot down here and your drop shot up here? So a lot of times it's it's gonna be pretty similar. I do use more of a fish for largemouth. I use like a six inch worm a lot. Fish for spots, I'll use a four and a half inch worm, four inch worm, whatever. Fish for smallmouth, use a lot of four inch worms, four and a half inch worms. Also some like shad looking baits and stuff like that but the main difference is going to be when i'm fishing for largemouth i just kind of upsize it if i'm fishing in brush piles i upsize it a little bit bigger hook a little bit bigger leader you know it just <clears throat> same kind of thing the standard weight size is going to be a quarter period if i'm fishing super deep like spotted bass dropping straight down on some go to a three eighths i mean super heavy current sometimes a half but it's pretty much going to be a quarter all the time the differences in drop shots from up here and, and there's i mean is basically going to be the hook I use, the pound test line I use, in the south I upsize a little bit, bigger hook like I said. Up north sometimes your nose hooking from small mouth you'll use a little bit different style of hook and then also whenever I'm making super long casts to some of them uh, small mouth and stuff I really do like a little bit longer rod and uh, you know like a 7.4 medium light something like that when I'm nose hooking I really really like that when I'm down here I don't use that type of stuff quite as much but another big big deal is going to be the length of the leader 
when you're fishing in you you know brush piles or fishing around rock points something like that you don't have to have a super long leader because the fish are on bottom when you're fishing for those smallmouth that are a little bit suspended i have a little bit longer leader especially in that current i have a little bit longer leader to help keep that bait up off the bottom so that's basically the differences in my small in my smallmouth plus southern setup when i go up there it is maximum of 12 pound test line, uh, backing for braid um usually going to be 10 12 something like that up there down here i'll go a lot more with the with the 16 or the 18 so that's basically the way i fluctuate just kind of beef it up a little bit when i'm fishing down here in the south what is it is it called a pop bar or a popper popper pop bar whatever i think a pop bar is actually the and yeah. boy he came well oh <laughs> oh i didn't swing him correctly he came way off the bank and had it and he had it super deep i'm still surprised that he came off but so popper pop R, whatever small little top water plugs basically eat it all the way he didn't eat it all the way that was a little old bitty one and i was sitting there and he was like don't 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 trying to get it anyways i've actually been throwing that recently and it is a bait that i've been throwing on actually this is gonna be a little bit different you can throw it on braid. You can throw it on braid, tie um, a, a mono leader to it. You can throw it on straight braid, whatever you want to do. I've been throwing it on 15 pound test mono recently. That's one of those things where basically what you're trying to do with it is imitate a type of forage. Look at that, I've got fish all over this thing right now. You're trying to imitate a type of forage. You're trying to imitate small little bait fish. You can do that whenever it's super sunny. You can do that whenever it's, you know, like cloudy wind kind of hurts it a little bit but for the most part the conditions for that is whenever you're around small types of forage that's going to be the condition we want to throw that doesn't matter about the actual weather now it does need to be a little bit warmer water i would say it needs to be over 50 probably 52 plus i don't really throw a lot until it's like a more of a post spawn deal the water's up there around 70 68 70 shad start spawning that type of stuff that's whatever i'm going to want to pick up a popper or a pop r whichever one you want to call it been throwing it recently on a six foot eight jerk bait rod it's the 13 fishing envy series and i've actually been catching them on it's pretty good and i really like that rod for it it's a six foot eight so i can i mean getting up there around bushes and slinging it and stuff like that like it just feels like you're not holding anything it's real easy to make real accurate casts with it but i do feel a little bit weird having a six foot eight rod in my hand to tell you the truth but it's one of those deals like i said where you're imitating a certain type of forage water clarity is going to be for me more clear slightly stained is okay but it's going to be typically a more of a clear water presentation and i always use round bend hooks i don't like the ewg style i change it if i'm fishing around a bunch of spotted bass i use the tournament grade wire um aaron martin's o'shaughnessy bend treble hooks around a lot of big large mouth i use a standard gamakatsu round bend and i don't really upsize them a lot i'll upsize them a little if i feel like the bait come with a like kind of underpowered hook but for the most part that 15 pound test mono that jerk bait rod you're not going to have to horse them you're not going to bend hooks too often so i just use a standard round bend hook on that that's one thing about them top water baits is the hook you put on it is extremely extremely important so that's kind of my top water setup the time of year is going to be anytime that water temp is over over 52 you can throw it for me it's going to be closer to 70. now we're stuck in trees but hey that's what we do out here all right so a lot of those baits we just went over were actually requests so if you have any more requests you want to keep doing this kind of make this a series i feel like it's not a ton of info but it is kind of a baseline for what i do for a lot of these baits i'm not saying any of these are laws i'm not saying that's what you have to do this is just kind of the conditions and the time of the year where i choose to throw these types of baits there's thousands of bass fishing lures thousands of baits all that type of stuff these are just the the times and the applications where i think about these baits so if y'all got any more requests or y'all do any of those baits a little bit differently than i do leave me a comment down below let me know i want to hear about it if y'all do something different than i do i want to be able to say hey that guy's crazy or hey that might be a pretty good idea so another props to hunter for coming up with this uh video idea and now we've made two of these and people seem to overwhelmingly like them look at that big one. oh you see him three and a half pounder out here throwing the apex around yep then got some followers slinging the apex and got rudely interrupted and the conditions aren't even just right yet here in about they won't be too long they're gonna be eating this thing so we might be able to film a little 
swimmer jigging video. So check back for that pretty soon. Has he got it? Nope. Little spotted bass. So check back for the swimming jig video soon. It's that time of year where, uh-oh, you're hitting leaves out here around the overhanging trees, getting hung up a little bit, catching a bass or two. They're eating the swim jig right now, so I think we might catch this one or two on. Anyways, I appreciate y'all watching this. I'm glad y'all made some comments, left some requests and stuff like that. Some baits I don't throw a ton, some baits I do throw a ton. So like I said, down below, let me know if you differ or if you like the video. Appreciate you guys watching. We shall see y'all.